Hey everyone, in this video we're going to use the integral of x to the i uh, to compute some other integrals that you would see in a regular calculus class. So, solution. So, we'll start off by integrating x to the i. So, x to the i with respect to x. So, to do this, all you do is use the power rule. So, you add 1 to the exponent, so you get x to the i plus 1. Then you just divide by i plus 1. Just like in a regular calculus class, you just add 1 and divide by the result, plus c. So now, uh, let's go ahead and take x to the i and try to write it in a more familiar way. So x to the i is equal to, well, you might remember that e to the ln x is equal to x. This is because the e and the natural log are inverse functions, so this cancels. So this is e to the ln x to the i, simply replacing x with e to the ln x. Properties of exponents now say we can take the i and multiply it by ln x. This is e to the i times ln x. Now we can use Euler's formula. Euler's formula is super famous. It says if you take e to the i theta, that's equal to cosine theta plus i sine theta. This is equal to cosine ln x plus i sine ln x. So now what we've essentially done is we've rewritten, we've rewritten x to the i. So I'm going to come back up here and show you exactly what we did. So this is equal to the integral of cosine ln x dx plus, and I can, I'm breaking it up, right, cosine ln x dx, and then I'm going to pull out the i. So i sine ln x dx. And we know that this is equal to x to the i plus 1 over i plus 1 plus c. So now what we'll do is, again, we'll take this and write it in a familiar way, and then we'll use matching to figure out these two integrals. Both of these integrals are from calculus. You can do them by first making a substitution. You would let u equal ln x. Then you would use integration by parts. Uh, I call them loopers because it loops. You have to use parts two times. Okay, so now let's take our x to the i and make it look like this. Let me go ahead and rewrite everything just for clarity. So we have x to the i equals cosine ln x plus i sine ln x. All right, so we need to get um, an i plus 1. So what we'll do is we'll multiply both sides by x to the 1. Put an x here, and I'm running out of room, so I'm going to squeeze in the parentheses and just rewrite this. Uh, when you multiply by x, you add the exponent, so you get 1 plus i or i plus 1. So you have x to the i plus 1 equals x. I'm going to leave myself some room this time times cosine ln x plus i sine ln x. Good stuff. All right, getting there. Now we need to get an i plus 1 on the bottom, so we'll divide both sides by i plus 1, i plus 1, i plus 1. So the i plus 1 is a problem, right? If we're going to use matching, let me go back up here and show you. All right, we're going to try to match these integrals, right? This and this to something, right? So we need to get rid of the i plus 1. It's a, it's a problem. So what we'll do is we'll multiply by 1 in a clever way. We'll multiply by i minus 1 over i minus 1. So on the left-hand side, who cares? We're not really going to use it. But over here we are, right over here. This is where the magic happens, right? So we end up with, I'm going to leave this as x, i minus 1, on the bottom, we have i minus 1, i plus 1. That's i squared minus 1 squared. That's the difference of squares. It's negative 1 minus 1, so it's negative 2. Boom. Then here we have cosine ln x plus i sine ln x. Okay. All right. And now let's go ahead and distribute stuff. I'm going to leave the, um, let's see, what's the best way to distribute this? Maybe uh, I'll leave the x over 2 out and the, and the negative, uh, and I'll, I'll distribute the negative and the i minus 1. How about before I do that, 
I'm going to put the negative upstairs and flip stuff. So this is x over 2. This might be cleaner. 1 minus i. There we go. And then cosine ln x. Yeah, a little bit easier, I think, maybe. Plus i sine ln x. Right? We have to distribute the uh, i minus 1 to clean stuff up. Everything's going to have an x over 2, so I'll just leave it out for now. All right, so let's see. I'm going to use a bracket here. So we have 1 minus i times cosine ln x. So it's going to be 1 times cosine ln x and then negative i times cosine ln x. So it'll be cosine ln x minus i cosine ln x. Just taking each one and multiplying it by cosine ln x. Now we're going to do the same thing with sine ln x and the i. So we have 1 minus i times this here. So 1 times that is just going to be that. So we have i sine ln x. Beautiful stuff. And then negative i times i, that's going to be negative i squared. So um, that's going to be negative 1 times negative 1, so it's 1, right? Because i squared is negative 1. This will be plus sine ln x. Beautiful stuff. Okay, I'm going to use a bracket here for clarity. All right, let's group together what we have. So we have x over 2. And let's look at the real part. That means the stuff that doesn't have i's. Cosine ln x, sine ln x. So it's going to be, uh, I'll put it in parentheses, cosine ln x plus sine ln x. And then here we have the i stuff, so plus i. This will be sine ln x minus cosine ln x. Okay? And we said that this was equal to, right, we said this is equal to x to the i dx. And we also said, if you recall, it was equal to, I believe, cosine ln x dx plus i integral sine ln x dx. So that means that the integral of cosine ln x is this bad boy here, of course adding a constant. So this would be the integral of cosine ln x. Pretty sure I have a video on this I made a couple of years ago of this specific problem, uh, but I didn't do it this way. And then here, uh, we have sine ln x dx. So kind of a cool problem, and that's it.